Hello everyone and welcome to another Spider Golf TV episode and today we're going to talk about fitting. How to enhance and optimize your fitting sessions using Spider Golf data. And for this I have an expert uh, with me in the field, John Lawson, a good friend, Spider Ambassador. We have the privilege to have him with us tonight. John, how are you? Hi Cedric, thanks for having me on the channel. Of course. So. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, um, what everything is all about uh, at your place. Okay, well, my name is uh, John Lawson. I'm, I'm in my fitting center just outside uh, Paris, uh, and I have what, 330 square meters of fitting center here. As you can see behind me, there's a few shafts. And I'm a, a full-time club fitter. That is, that is basically all I do. So I spend uh, all my life in this, in this place. And I've seen it, and it's pretty. <laughs> what tools do you uh, What tools do you use when you do your fitting sessions? So I've been using Gears Gears Golf now, which is a 3D system with uh, eight cameras uh, for the last four years now, and that basically gives me all the information I need on, on how the golf club works. I also use Foresight, a Foresight Quad for the, the ball information or the data on the on the ball. Uh, and pretty much all the, the major brands, but I'm completely brand, brand agnostic, so there's, uh, there's no obligation uh, to, uh, to use any, any brand in particular. And all, all my shafts are on universal adapters, so I can I put that pretty much anywhere. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. And you have, uh, and I think you have all levels of player when you, when you fit them, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Pretty much from, from tour player to, to pretty much beginner. Perfect, perfect. And we, we talked about this, and, and this is how we got together, really, uh, with Spider and, and the fitting environment. And we mentioned, uh, you and I, the fact of the need of getting um, data, of having data before you meet the person, because you only have that person for a certain amount of time, and that time is going to be reserved for a specific session. But having those information, having those stats, having those data and those performance metrics, that's going to help you uh, um, enhance your session. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's a huge, huge start, uh, having, having data, having, uh, I think we're going to look into this a little bit later, but having all the, all the, the data on what clubs they're playing, what sort of shafts they're playing, maybe some loft and lie information as well. And obviously the dispersion data and the gapping data. So we, I already have pretty much an idea of what they're doing on the golf course before they come in, which makes life a lot easier because sometimes uh, when you're in, in the fitting center, it's not always exactly the same as what happens on the golf course. So it's good to have a, a sort of a, uh, a, a different and exterior or sort of view on things before the, the people come in. Of course, of course. And we said that about uh, um, with, we said that about coaching, but obviously it's the same thing with fitting. You need some information. You need you need the past, and you need to help to focus and position your play on what he needs now, but also the evolution and the trend and 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 everything that went before that, going into that objective of having the right club at the right time, but also working in the future as well. Absolutely, yeah. And so we're going to show a little bit about how we do this and how we put this together and how you utilize um, the Spider Golf uh, app at the moment with your students. So I'm going to share it on screen. And so the, the first thing, if I'm not mistaken, is you look at the person distance pattern. Yeah, distance gap. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And then when you have that uh, on the app, you have it by club, you have the distance average, and you have it by lie as well. But the beauty is, and you show me that, is the fact that your users are sending you a table with club brand, model, shaft information, and distances, and all lies. So you can already have this with you before you start the session. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, I mean, it obviously depends why they're coming in, uh, but if I've got a, an iron session, for example, you can pretty much straight away see if something uh, is not going correctly, i.e. if there's some very big gapping uh, trouble, or if uh, maybe they should be hitting it further uh, than they do. 
then obviously we're going to be looking at the dis dispersion charts to see what's going on there as well. So it's it's a big jump forward as opposed to having to hit loads of balls to get an idea beforehand. It's, it's uh, definitely makes things go faster. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. And to give um to give a little insight of how you function and what you look at. Um, so obviously, just a quick reminder for um, for everyone watching that when you look at dispersion patterns um, with spider golf data on the shot by shot analysis, we have that pattern which is represented on screen. So the blue dots are the good contact, the gray dot are the miss hits, the red dot is the average of all the points, the red circle is one standard deviation, we have lateral dispersion, vertical dispersion, we have the number of balls inside the grid radius, and we have the impact quality and the process quality as well. And with that information uh, in the driver, the woods, the irons and the wedges, we got together and uh, we have, we've identified, or John mainly identified with the information that he has acquired throughout his experience, um, some common places and patterns that's going to help him uh, gear towards a club head uh, um, selection to, uh, to optimize a session. John, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you could actually, you could, you could take that even further. I mean, it's going to be related, obviously, to club head, center of gravity. It could be, uh, it could be basically related to lie angles, lofts, uh, shaft deflection, uh, grip size. You can, you can basically take the, the three elements of the golf club, uh, which could be related to the dispersion, which you, you'll see on the screen. Okay, great, great. So having said that, um, we are going to go into a what I call your spider grid analysis and, and what you did with it. And we'll talk about it a little bit, or you mainly will talk about it, and I'll exchange that. So here is the first slide. Uh, please help us understand all those letters. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just obviously abbreviated because there's not enough room in these little bubbles. But uh, mm -hmm. what you're seeing there is, is, is a spider grid. And this is more related to driver. Um, so what you're looking at here is obviously in the middle, CS is just uh, center strike and face to path neutral. So that, I mean, if, if you're looking at a, obviously a, a completely neutral path, a center strike, that's gonna give you a straight ball uh, in the middle of the uh, middle of the grid. Assuming that the players, yeah, assuming that the players is aligned at his target and intended yeah. to do a straight shot to that target. Exactly. Sure. I mean, it's just really keeping it as simple as possible. If the guy was aiming at the of middle course. of the green or the or the flag and he's he's hit it straight out the middle of the club, that will give you that that zero dispersion. It's a starting point. Yeah, of course. It's a starting point. It's really just an overview. It's it's not a, a complete science, an exact science, but it of gives course. you an idea. Mm -hmm. of what's going on or could give you so, a, a, an axe which you now might want to tr work in, in in that direction so basically that's the starting point so cs is center strike and then you go from there and you look uh, look down so you got the short one that could be a low strike a hit on the bottom of the face and hs is just high spin so just hitting it off the bottom of the face is going to get a, a little more of a vertical gearing which will create more spin and that will create this 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 shorter shorter ball flight. I mean, it could be other things. I mean, you could you could have hit it off the top of the face as well. And just you know, it just could be a, one of those ones. But I mean, that that's just an idea. What's good is when, and we're going to go along and explain uh, the rest of it. But what's good is I'm guessing, like you said, it's a starting point. It's an overall information for you to have and keep in your mind when you ask questions. And, and when you screen the answers, I think it would actually um, enhance the communication between the player that you have in front of you and you as a fitter. Absolutely. I mean, if the first the first thing I do when I get people uh, on gears is obviously to look at, at impact. So if I'm getting the same thing on gears and I've got this, this short tendency and uh, the ball's been hitting on the bottom of the face every time, we've definitely got some sort of coherence in there. We definitely want to know what's going on. And there we obviously are gonna be looking for why that's happening. Is, is it more to do with shaft deflection? Is it 
tea height. It could be all sorts of weird stuff. So, I mean, course, it's just, as course. I say, it's just a starting point. Uh, and then I'm going to walk around it sort of clockwise, the so short left. That could be a, a toe strike and maybe low uh, for the same sort of reason. So, you get got just horizontal gearing going on now. So, the ball could be going a little bit more to the left and probably hit off the bottom of the club. So, it's giving it more spin again. Uh, the left toe is yet again uh, just gearing to the left. Long left is probably going to be a little higher up, which is going to give you less spin, and maybe just a face to path, which is close, which is going to get you know more ball speed, less spin, and further distance, but to the left. So that that could be that one. Yet again, you're going to have to explore to see exactly what's going on. Of course, of course. But it could be an idea. And long would be, uh, uh, again, again, probably hit uh, slightly higher on the face, which is going to give that lower spin again. And you're just going to move around in that way. It's, I mean, exactly. But the other side, it could be the, the opposite thing, the face to path slightly open, maybe hit off the heel. Uh, they're, all, they're all pretty logical stuff, just basically going off, uh, just contact and face to path on, on that graph. And if we go, um, if we switch to uh, another graph, and if we see, for example, the top left graph, and we mentioned about that spread of miss hits short that could be hit on the bottom of the face with a high spin, um, again, it's a starting point to identify and analyze what you're seeing, and that's going to not only speed up your analysis, but allow you to ask the right question at the right time to have your answer. Yeah, I mean, this guy, I mean, the top left is not really got a face to path problem. You're, you're definitely looking at contact there. Exactly, exactly. Um, perfect. So let's go back to the grid, the, the page that we had. So this is con contact face to path. And we have a, another one, which is shaft. Maybe you want to go over a little bit about this slide? Yeah, well, this is, this is basically going to have. Uh, an effect on what you saw on the first one. Um, so yet again, the middle one is just going to be a, a center strike and a neutral face to path. Mm -hmm. The short one could be too much shaft deflection, i.e. positive deflection at impact, the head of the club head coming too much in front of the shaft at impact, which is basically going to reduce the radius of the shaft and tend to increase loft and tend to hit the ball a little bit lower on the face. So that's going to give you that short one again. Uh, short left could be a, a droop, uh, maybe just the shaft drooping down and giving in that toe strike, which is going to give you the gearing to, from right to left. And, you know, moving around the field is basically going to be more, more or less deflection, more and more, more or less droop, or it could also be related to torque, to twisting. So the less torque you're going to have, the tendency would be moving more to the left and the more more to the right. So it's, it's, it's all, I mean, yet again, this is just a starting point. Of it's course, just an idea. Of course. Of course. But uh, if you've got somebody striking it uh, pretty well and you've got this sort of lateral dispersion, or you've got somebody who's definitely complaining about contact and you've got differences in, in, in length, in profonda, uh, this, 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 that could be shaft trouble yet again. And again, if we go back to that to, to that screen, then if we look at the top right dispersion where he only has nothing but good impact, but the ball is spread, the control is not there. Uh, obviously, it, there might be something to to work with, and you're gonna you're gonna tell us about this. Maybe a shaft flexibility uh, or even a head choice uh, not 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 precise enough. Not. I mean, I don't know. You, you, you're, uh, you, you're the guy. It could be all of that. I mean, all of the above. Uh, it's, it's uh, basically uh, maybe the head isn't uh, easy enough to play, and i.e., I mean, even if it's striking it, you're getting different spin rates. Uh, it could be shaft again, which is is not reacting the same way or not as the way you want it to all the time, which is giving you different dynamic lofts. Uh, but basically, have you got that sort of difference in, in, in length, the club's not coming into impact the same way all the time. So, exactly. or for some, some reason or another, they're not swinging at the same speed. Right. So, I mean, it, right, could, right. it could be, uh, it could be multiple, uh, multiple something problems. is, something is not matching for him to yeah, have that part in that pattern. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. On the bottom right, um, it could be a lie problem. I'm assuming that could be a, yeah, a, a, I mean, a, a looking at irons, I mean, if that, that person's hitting a ball 
as far as he's concerned or she's concerned, out of the middle of the club all the time, and they're all on the right. So that, I mean, if you're looking at irons, that could definitely be a lie problem, the light being too flat. It could be a torque problem, i.e. too much torque in the shirt and you're just not being able to close that club face. Or it could just be on an iron, it could be just a, a, a toe strike, which is just opening that face. Or it could be grip size. Uh, it could be a grip which is too big, which they're not able to close the face on. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. And it's obviously we're not going to go in depth. Uh, uh, it's really a, a teaser of how we can correlate both uh, solutions and uh, make something uh, that's going to enhance both products uh, and, and facilitate the job. So it, it's it's a starting point, obviously. It will be Absolutely. developed, it will be enhanced, it will be uh, so we can actually uh, do even better. But again, uh, we can get some information, we can gear some information. Uh, we mentioned the woods, the irons, but you can also use it for wedges and gapping, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. sure that yes, uh, uh, everything is, is, uh, is right. I know you have fitted one of my students on a bunker issue where the bounce uh, was not proper to his swing mechanics and the analysis of the sand and the way that he was playing it. And mm -hmm. I know it was affecting dramatically, not only his impact, but obviously his distance pattern and just a change of bounce uh, made his life much easier. Yeah. So there, there's so many things that can be done in relation to the dispersion from the person's target, intended target, plus the impact quality uh, mm -hmm. helps us, helps you identify a couple of things on top of what you do in your sessions for sure yeah that sums up on um, how to use spider golf and the performance metrics to connect with a fitting session to be able to enhance and optimize both products so john thank you very much for taking the time and being with us thank you cedric thanks uh, thanks for having me on it's always a pleasure. Oh, by the way, we will do a Instagram live very soon. So we'll answer all your questions and we will communicate that very soon. So stay tuned.